This girl is on fire. This girl is on fire. Oh, I got Phoebe Trotman here on a little less fear. Yeah, welcome back, everybody, to the A Little Less Fear podcast. Today, I would love to welcome Phoebe Trotman. She's a successful and heart centered entrepreneur based in Vancouver, Canada who is passionate about helping others discover their joy. I love this. In both her athletic and professional careers, Phoebe's personal success has been a testament that anything is possible with hard work, dedication, and a team-centered approach. Welcome, Phoebe, to A Little Less Fear podcast. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much for having me. I've been looking forward to this for a few months now, so it is great. I love what you do with this podcast and just how you're inspiring and helping people. You have such a beautiful heart. And it, I mean, it takes one to know one, Phoebe. So I'm glad that we're both vibing the same here. So you are currently in Canada right now? I am in currently in Canada. I'm actually on the other side of Canada. I'm on the coast in Vancouver. And right now I'm in Toronto, Ontario. So on the other side of the country. And you're there on holiday or are you there for something else? Little bit of everything so a little bit of business i have family out here good friends out here so out here for a little pre-christmas uh celebration if you will so it's been fun connecting people, you know, with people just you know, plan for 2024 and getting excited about that too excellent so hey this is an incredible um opportunity here to get to know you and i know that you've got an incredible book that just came out called never quit on a bad day i love that and when I read your profile and that and I read that line that that's the title of your book, I I mean, I immediately I was like, wow, I can definitely feel into this. And just that one line can really inspire so many people never quit on a bad day. But before we talk about your book, what brought you to this journey to where you are at today? Yeah, you know what? It's been an interesting journey, you know, like it definitely has had a lot of twists and turns. And I'm just so grateful to be on this journey and just to have it. And so my background really in athletics, so I played um, soccer for many, many years. I started off when I was five years old and uh, continued playing. Uh, at, then I had some, you know, setbacks as you will. Like I was a, definitely a talented player. And I still remember this one time when I went out for a soccer team and I didn't make that team and I was just devastated by it. And all this, you know, led up to kind of who I am, because in looking back on that, I had a couple of choices and my parents were very, um, they were incredible people in the sense that I was crying my eyes out when I didn't make this team. It was a shock because I had been known to be, you know, a decent soccer player. And my parents kind of gave me this lesson where it was like, okay, well now what are you going to do about it? Do you want to continue to sit and cry? Cause I've been crying for a long time and, uh, or, I can, I can look in the mirror and be like, okay, at the end of the day, it's up to me. What can I do differently? And so I share that because that was such a powerful lesson that I learned back then that really has fueled me throughout my life. And, and when that happened, I looked in the mirror and I went, well, here's what I can control. I can control how hard I work. I can control my attitude. I can control doing extra training. I can control doing fitness the days, even I don't want to, you know, so many things. And so from that point on, I made that decision that didn't matter whatever team I tried out for going forward, that coaches were going to want Phoebe Trotman on their, her, their team. And from that point on, you know, I just continued to play, played high level soccer, um, played in university, played semi-pro. I have had an incredible soccer career and uh, how I let transition soccer into entrepreneurship we can kind of cover that in a moment, if you will. But I did want to lay that foundation because it truly does tie into the book and everything that I'm about now. I love how you said this, that at the end of the day, what can I do? What basically, what can you do to change the situation? Because at this fault, at this point, you're not blaming anyone. It's nobody's fault. And it's not even a fault at all. You're just wondering how can you take responsibility for that and change it around? And mm -hmm at that moment is when you realize that you can control how hard you work, you can control the choices that you make and you change your attitude by saying that coaches are going to want Phoebe Trotman on, on their team. You, you mm -hmm. literally put that energy out there. You put that mental state into your physical form and you made it happen. What was that like? 
I did. And it's, it's interesting because I don't know if, you know, I'm so grateful for my parents because it could have taken such a different approach, right? At that time, like I was devastated. And, you know, it's interesting because looking back, there were other parents who were surprised they didn't make the team. And so there could have been a whole myriad of reasons why I did not make the team. But it, my parents just came to the realization and had that conversation where it's like, what's done is done. Like the decision has been made. So you have to focus on what you can control. And so, you know, I'm grateful for that lesson as tough as it was at the time, because you don't want to hear that. You want to hear your parents are like going off to the coach or they're going to say this, or they're going to do this, but it really was something where I had to, had to make that choice. And so the choice that I made was I loved the sport. I loved playing. And so now it's time to focus on again, what I can control. And that lesson has held me it's carried out throughout my life. And it's something that is just so important for all of us to truly understand that we can control our response. What happens is what happens. That event is an event. It's how, what, how we choose to react to it. That is going to impact the outcome of what happens next. And so at that moment, I just took control of the situation in terms of my athletic abilities and worked as hard as I could so that going forward, I had this, um, I had this, this posture of just hard work, a positive attitude, and it all came together. And again, I'm just very fortunate that I had, I've played on some amazing teams and I've had a great career as a, as a soccer player. And so hard work and positive attitude came hand in hand with you. Would you say that one weighs more than the other? No, I think they do really go in tandem because it, it's important to work hard at whatever you do. And that being said, if you don't have a good attitude about the working hard and whatever you do, it's they're going to pull against each other, right? So it's right. really embracing that attitude of like, I'm going to enjoy this. And when I say enjoy it, you know, like we used to have to do ice baths and I didn't enjoy oh, the oh. ice bath if you will. That wasn't yeah. fun. However, what I focused on is I enjoyed the result of doing those ice baths in the sense that my body felt better so I could perform better on the field. So, and that's some, another kind of um, important philosophy is sometimes people say, just be grateful for the situation, be grateful for the situation. Right. And sometimes that's hard to do because you're right. in it. So yeah. one thing that I always share is it's not maybe being grateful for the situation, but it's being grateful for the fact that you're alive to be, to have that situation, or you're grateful for the outcome of that situation, or you're grateful for the person you are that was able to push through that situation. And so it's sort of a spin on that in the sense that as much as that, you know, getting cut from that team, am I grateful that I got cut? No, not necessarily, but I'm grateful for that experience because it helped me grow into the person that I am. Do you ever wonder what it would have been like for you in your career, in your life, had you not been cut from that team, that one specific team? Yeah, it, I, I feel like it would have been such a different experience. I mean, I also had other challenges, if you will, where, you know, my parents gave me the focus on what you can control kind of conversation. Um, so I definitely would have had that lesson. I just don't know if it would have landed as hard because it happened in an area that was so critical and important to me. So it landed in a, in a much more life-changing way, if you will. And so, yeah, in hindsight, I am, I'm grateful for the way my parents handled that situation because had they handled it in a different way, they could have said, you know what, that's not fair. We're going to go talk to the coach and who knows where I would be now had they done it that way. But they looked at it as, you know, again, a life lesson. And they looked at it as something, well, hey, let's pass this, pass it. We're not going to change this person's mind, but you can change what happens now going forward and every step from that, that point on. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. So then that life lesson that you learned was meant to happen exactly as it did, the way it unfolded to push you forward to your next level, if I can use the word, because it kind of is a type of expansion, a leveling up, and especially if you're changing your attitude. I mean, that changes your focus as well when you change your attitude. And so, Absolutely. When you, yeah. So when you change your attitude and your focus to the coach, the coach, all the coaches are going to want Phoebe Trotman on their team. How mm -hmm. did that push you to your next level, to your next journey, towards your next goal? In terms of when you're saying that, in terms of athletics or in general, yes, in just terms in terms of athletics. Yeah, absolutely. So from that point on, I mean, I just, I had a focus in terms of, again, what I could control, how hard I worked, extra training 
gaming, etc. And then from there, I continued to play, you know, in our league, if you will. And then I went on to play university soccer. And it's so interesting because people will see some of the, you know, accolades and individual awards that I have and think that, you know, I came onto the university team and I started right away. And that wasn't the case. I still had to work hard. I knew I'd be on the team, but now it's a difference between being on the team and being an impact role on the, the team. And so when I first started in university, I came off the bench. I worked hard. I, I worked so hard that I turned it into a starting position and then had, you know, a lot of accolades from there. And the one thing that, again, being able to focus on what I can control was having that mindset of it didn't matter whether I had five minutes on the game field, whether I had 45 minutes, whether I had a full 90 or going into overtime, whatever time that I was given and I was on the field, I was going to make the most of it. And that's another really important lesson for people to realize that, you know, it's kind of a philosophy of like prosper where you're planted and make the most of every opportunity that you're given. Because in that time, when I was coming off the bench, it was, there was a noticeable, and that was my goal. I was like, you know what? Okay. If I'm going to be a coming off the sub, you better believe I'm going to be a super sub. And I mean that. I love that. that When I get on that field, (laughs) you're going to notice a shift. And that's something I teach young players now too, is like, again, whatever time you're given, make the most of that yeah he's so good in that time that they're like wait a second we need we want to give her a little bit more time or give him a little bit more time or them a little bit more time because of what they're bringing when they have that opportunity i love this phoebe so make the most out of every opportunity because you never know you're going to be make your make sure you're shining out of all the opportunities that you get shine bright shine your best and that's what you were doing and you became you were in, in several hall of fames correct yeah, so I have some team inductions in Hall of Fames, and then I have some athlete inductions in Hall of Fames. And, you know, again, it's it's making the most of that situation. And one thing I want to bring back to, you know, is because, again, back to that attitude. So, you know, someone as a player, as an employee, as a business owner, it I easily could have had that mentality of, well, I'm only a sub. So I'm only going to play coming off the bench. Well, I'm only going to get X amount of minutes. I'm only going to that doesn't serve you. And again, that's why I say it does come down. You asked about hard work and attitude. That's where that attitude is like, oh my gosh, I am a sub. I get an opportunity to come off the bench and really have my impact be seen. So it's just flipping. It's really your mindset of how you want to look at that situation. And by flipping it into, hey, I am this and I have the ability to do this and this is what I can create. That's what led to to the success and, and you know, again, being on teams that were inducted into different sports hall of fames, as well as um, being inducted into the Coquitlam Sports Hall of Fame as an athlete. And so when did you finally retire your jersey, if I can say it that way? Well, I still play. So that jer- I still have a jersey on. Awesome. on sometimes. I do still play. I do still play. Um, but that being said, not at the same level as I did back then. And so I retired in, I believe it was 2006, 2007 from the Vancouver Whitecaps. And uh, it's an interesting time that I retired. And I actually do talk about it a little bit in the book from the sense of, you know, because I can hear people when they hear the title, never quit on a bad day right away, it's like, wait, I never quit something. And that's not what it's about at all. Um, But when I did decide to transition, because I like to say I transitioned or I moved forward into kind of the next phase of my life, it really was just at a time. Yeah, because it was at a time where, you know, I loved playing professional soccer and and road trips and going, you know, training, because we would train four to five times a week and then games. That being said, I had decided kind of Uh, that I was starting this entrepreneurial journey, if you will. And I knew that being an entrepreneur was going to take time, was going to take focus, it was going to take hard work. And I felt that that was what I wanted to focus on. I wanted to focus on my entrepreneurial journey. I wanted to focus on my family and being able to be there for events because there had been a lot of things that I wasn't able to attend because I was on the road or playing a game. And that was, that was what I wanted to do in that season. I just felt this sense of peace when I made that decision that I wasn't going to continue playing. It wasn't after a bad game. It wasn't because I was frustrated. It wasn't because I was angry. It really was from a place of like, here's the next phase of my life. This is what I wanted to focus on. And so I look at it. It it wasn't that I quit playing in terms of that league. It was that I transitioned forward. I moved forward into the next chapter of my life, which was entrepreneurship. So before but before transitioning into entrepreneurship, what got you to even become curious about becoming an entrepreneur? 
Yeah, absolutely. So my parents had always had like side businesses, if you will. And so I knew that I wanted to have something, you know, kind of down the road where I could have, you know, flexible lifestyle and kind of have my own thing. I didn't know what that was going to look like. I was pretty open. And so I had actually been working as well too, out of university. I was working at a computer company and on the side, this is all while I'm playing, I had started just different side businesses, if you will. One of them naturally being a soccer and athlete, I started a coaching company with a teammate of mine. And so we had that. And then I started learning about real estate investing. And so I had a bunch of different things that were kind of that I had been doing while I was playing, if you will, that it was just, you know, real estate investing, just different things that I was learning about while I was playing. And so that's when it, it had already kind of been a seed that had been there for several years before it was time to kind of take more of that leap forward, if you will. And how soon into your entrepreneurship did you decide to write a book? Yeah, so it's been, well, I've been an entrepreneur now full time. Um, it's been 16 years. So it's wow, has that's been a long time. A, I know, right? Especially because I'm only like 25. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> it's, it's been a, it's been a long, <laughs> right? You too, exactly. Um, so yeah, so it's it's been 16 years, and so my journey as an entrepreneur has been, at, you know, like anything. There's lots of ups and downs, and I actually, in my head, my my plan for being an entrepreneur was again just to transition over. I had a full time job as well when I was playing soccer too, and um, the company went bankrupt, and I was laid off, and that's when I had this crossroads moment again, where it was like, okay, do I, you know, look for another job? Do I go back and get my master's? And, you know, when I evaluated and looked forward into what I wanted my life to look like, I realized that I wanted to have my own business full time. This is what I wanted to do. And so um, in that, in, and again, it's kind of goes back to what we talked about with not making the team is going back to, well, what can I control? Because when I was laid off, I had options and I looked at it as a chance to kind of pause and go, what is really important for me looking forward in my life and then working from there. And so um, that's kind of when I started that entrepreneurial journey that led us to us talking now. Reflective mind you have to see again, what you were seeing every, what most people see as obstacle as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it, 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 again, it comes down to that attitude that we talked about too, right? We have a right. choice. I could have looked at it as, you know, and again, it, it was I happy or grateful that I was laid off? Not necessarily, but I was grateful that I had time to like have that pause to go, <laughs> okay, what next? I was grateful for the fact that it kind of pushed me into entrepreneurship a little bit sooner than I would have planned if I had stuck to the plan that I had laid out, if you will. So um, that attitude, it really is so key because we have a choice with every situation on how we're going to react to it. And I've always been quite a, you know, even in my soccer career after games, I would take that time to reflect, to go, okay, well, what could I have done differently? You know, how would I like to improve on the ne next time I play, et cetera, et cetera. And so that has carried through as an athlete. And then that's what I did in terms of when I was, laid off, I sort of looked forward and went, okay, well, and I always encourage people to do that is look forward because you want to know where you're headed, right? That's how you can yeah. figure out the journey. And sometimes the journey takes different paths, but ultimately, where do you want to go? And what do you want to create? And what do you want your life to look like? Phoebe, what if people don't know? What if someone comes up to you and they're like, I read your book and all this stuff, but I'm at a place in my life where I don't know where I want to go. I don't know where I'm going. I'm Absolutely. That, that's, that's hard, right? That's hard. And I would say to that person, I'd encourage them to take a little bit of, of them time, if you will, and get into a quiet place and really start thinking about, and you could even just do it as a list, but like, what brings you joy? You know, if someone yeah. were to ask, what makes you smile? What makes you smile? I'd encourage them to start writing that down. And for every person, it's going to be different, but I'd encourage them to write it down. So it gets them in that place of, you know, first of all, you're feeling, you know, somewhat of the joy in your heart when you're thinking about the things that light you up and then go from there and see if you can flesh out any of those things. And again, it depends. Not every single person necessarily wants to go the entrepreneurial route and not every single person has to go that route or an athletic route. It really it doesn't, doesn't 
does come down to what makes someone happy. And I do encourage them in doing that to also figure out what does success look like for them? Because a lot of times we have this idea of what success looks like based on what someone else has told us it needs to look right. like. And, and if, and then you're chasing after something that isn't even something you want, and that's not going to lead to a fulfilling life either. What does success look like for you? Is there a difference between what does success feel like to you versus what does it look like for you? Or can we both, or can we do both? Oh, interesting. I would say, well, I, I would say personally for me, it is a feeling, right? Success to me would be a feeling and and ties into what it looks like, but it does come down to a feeling. And I go back to joy, what brings a smile to someone's face. And for me, it's being able to be there for my friends and family to, to do things that I do enjoy, which is spending a lot of time with friends and family and seeing them shine and being a cheerleader for other people. I yeah. love cheering other people on <laughs> when they're going after their goals and dreams. And so it, it's, is it something that it looks like? I feel like it's kind of a bit of both. I feel like it's a bit depending on the person, right? For me, it is a feeling like I, I know what brings me joy. And I, as I'm talking about, it, I can see it like my, my family, see my family. I can see my friends. I love to travel like that. Just being somewhere hot and tropical. I love that. <laughs> so there's a lot of pieces there yeah. and also being able to give to being able to give to other people. I enjoy, again, whether it's giving from a time perspective, giving from a donation financially, being able to help someone out perspective or giving from an encouragement perspective as well, too, because there's so many people who, you know, encouragement can go so far, a word of encouragement, a, you know, saying, Hey, good job cheering them on, offering ideas or suggestions or, or contributing in that way, that to me also brings me joy. I absolutely agree there, especially words of encouragement, because you don't know who's actually missing that in their life. There might be someone out there that's not getting one word of encouragement. And if you could just go in there and and share your light with them and give them that boost of confidence that they need for that moment, it could last forever. Yes. And there's a ripple effect. I talk about this too, because it isn't, we think, okay, we do something for that person, right? Right. <laughs> and yes, you did something for that person. However, there's such a powerful ripple effect. And I challenge everyone listening to think about a time where you did something for someone, whatever that might be, how it changed that person's energy also how it shifted your energy because naturally right we talked about we're vibing on the same level right <laughs> so when you're giving it boosts that person's energy but it also boosts yours Absolutely. that means it doesn't just stop there it's not just those two people because those two people yourself and the person you help are now going out into the world if you will or, or their community and because of something that that shift in that energy that is leveling up lifting them up they're now going around on a different, it just changes it, you know? And so now they're impacting people in a different way, changes those people and it continues on. And so it really just continues on. It isn't just that one person that you're impacting, you're impacting a community, you're impacting other people and it changes you as well too. I love the ripple effect, the domino effect. It really does. It, it just, you, you give and you receive and that gift keeps on giving over and over, over and over, even if you're not aware of it, it's, and somehow it all comes back to you as well. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what I wanted to ask you too, what do you feel like in terms of success? Do you feel like it's something that you feel? It's something that you, um, that you feel or something you can vi you visualize, like, tell me a little bit. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Wow. You're asking me questions. I love it. I am. I'm flipping it on you. I'm I love it this, you. Phoebe. This is incredible. This is connection. This is giving and receiving. You know what? For me, it's a little bit of both. And for a lot of the time growing up, I thought that I had to see it. I had to see it first in order to feel successful. But I'm learning now that the more the more wisdom that I gain as a human being, I'm learning that the more that I turn inward and love myself and give love to others and learn to receive love back, that love is success. And as long mm -hmm. as I'm feeling love in what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. And if that's my intention, naturally, I don't even have to put my intention out there. I'm already radiating love. And if I'm radiating love, there's no reason to even meditate on I'm, I'm going to be intentional with this. It's already there. And so for me, if I, it's already successful, if I'm doing it out of the pureness of, of my heart and my soul, 
because there's integrity involved with love. There's um, there's honesty, there's joy, there's peace, there's ease, there's grace, there's gratitude, there's appreciation, just all of these higher vib vibrations that come with just love. And so, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I get into this human mode where I'm like, oh, man, where are my million dollars? Oh, man, where's my new car? You know, like, I mean, you know, I get into these modes as well. But then I have to come back and ground myself and be like, hang on a minute. But if I'm not vibing on love and I got this brand new car on the lot or this mansion I've always wanted and I'm not vibing on love, I'm not going to be appreciating any of it. So the foundation mm -hmm. is always love. And if I can come back to this foundation, when that time comes and I am able to receive those things, it'll be more of a humble place in my life and a humble state of mind. Mm -hmm. And then I'm able to give more to others at that point and kind of just allow that flow of energy to go through and, and just to radiate. Yeah. Thanks for that question. I love it. I love it. That was like mic drop that, that snippet right there, right there. You just you beautifully shared that. I love that. Thanks Phoebe. So, Hey Phoebe, let's talk about your book. Never quit on a bad day. How did that title come to be? Did you come up with it? Were you inspired by it? Did you hear it somewhere? How did that title come to be? I did. You know what? I heard that saying many, many years ago. Um, and then I heard it again in another business context. And it just, it always stuck with me because again, when I look back over kind of my life and, you know, different things that happened, I really just kept showing up. I kept going, even on the times when I wanted, you know, to quit, go back to the soccer store of getting cut, you know, that experience or other things, injuries, different things. However, I just kept going. Right. And so with the book, it's interesting. And I always encourage people who are listening, just be open because, you know, if someone had said at this point in time, I would have written and published this book and, you know, the review, all this stuff that's happening. I, it, it wasn't, I'm a very visual person in the sense that I visualize, like even before games, I would visualize the game. I visualize events. I visualize where I want to go and what I want to create. And really and truly writing a book wasn't in my visualization. That being said, uh, I was with some good friends and they were, we were just chatting about what's next in terms of our entrepreneur journey. And I shared with them that I wanted to create something that would help and inspire and encourage people. And I didn't know what it was going to look like. However, I just had it on my heart the last few years. And they actually were the ones who were like, well, why don't you write a book? And I kind of chuckled a little bit at it because I had some other people who suggested it. And I just was like, you know, I don't, that's, I don't know if I feel like that's what I should do. And uh, there we go, talking about feeling. Um, so I wasn't really sure. And they kind of spun it on me in the sense of I was sharing a story with them earlier on. And they kind of circled back to that story and they said, you know, the whole reason that you worked so hard to, to do this was to show other people they could do it and to help people. And that's the same reason you should write a book. And when they said it like that, that it, you go again, it wasn't just about me, it was the people it could help and touch and inspire. Then I was open to the idea. However, I said to them, you know, I, I'm open to it. However, if I'm going to write a book, it has to do two things. Number one, it has to help and inspire people. And number two, I have to feel passionate about what I'm writing about. Yeah. And so then I was summering on it because now I'm open, right? So I was like, okay, what would I do? Write a book about? And the month before that, um, we had, I had the incredible honor. I was inducted into the Coquitlam Sports Hall of Fame as an athlete. And we had an interview process. And in that interview, the interviewer asked me, what has sport given me? And I shared, you know, some of the incredible highs of, you know, national championships and MVP awards and all these incredible accolades and all the life skills that I've learned being an athlete. And then I shared, though, that the only reason I was able to have those highs and a lot of those life skills is because of the tough stuff. Yeah. Getting cut from the team, sitting on the bench, some games not even dressing, like all these things and kept, but continuing to show up. Mm. And that's when I realized that's what I wanted the book to be about. I wanted the book to be about some of the tough stuff that we don't always talk about and how someone pushed through that tough stuff and why they pushed through that tough stuff and maybe even share a tip on how they were able to help push through that tough stuff yeah. to get to the other side. And then the, the saying never quit on a bad day hit me because it kind of summed up what I was feeling and thinking. And then I always do this thing with God. I call it my open the door, close the door. Yeah. And uh, so with the name never quit on a bad day, I was like, okay, God, if I'm supposed to write this book, Never quit on a bad day. The domain name will be available. The URL, never quit on a bad day, will be available. If it's if I'm not supposed to write this book right now, or if it's not <laughs> that the title name, won't be available. Door, it won't be available, right? <laughs> that's how I was. And then I get home from that trip and I look it up and it was available. And I was like, 
oh, okay, so we're we're opening the door, I guess, <laughs> you know, and then, yeah. and here we are. So yeah, so that's kind of how the name came to be and, and just feeling like it was time and the right step. And it's just been, it's been incredible. It's been so much fun. It's been so much fun bringing, bringing it all together and just seeing the response too. Oh man, what an incredible story. You know, as you were saying this, I was feeling into your story about how your friends told you you should write a book and you were at first resistant to it. And while you were telling me that I was feeling, you know, you're, we're going to reflect to our friends and our friends are going to reflect to us who we are. And so they knew you were capable of doing this. And mm -hmm. in them telling you this, even though you weren't aware that you were going to write a book or that you could write a book, it, it, they were a catalyst for you to start thinking about it because deep down inside you knew you could. And mm -hmm. so then you were able to contemplate it and think about what is this book going to be about? What would I write about? And then what, and then you start talking about the struggles and the challenges and how we all overcome struggles and challenges. And then you got the message from God giving you the reassurance. Yes. Never quit on a bad day is available title for you. And so it's like it, the doors were open all along. And, mm -hmm. and I feel that this is really common with, with people in general, where we resist a lot of ideas, but little do we know that the very thing we're resisting could be the one thing that opens up the biggest door of our life to other people's lives and help them open up doors as well. That could be the very equation, uh, the answer to the equation that we've been seeking, at least at that moment, because obviously when we grow older and have more life experience, we'll have other, other things we want to do and stuff like that. But that's incredible the way that it all came into fruition for you. And so then you started to write the book. You got your incredible mm -hmm. title. And so what did it feel like when you completed the book? Did you feel, what did you feel? Yeah, it, it's such an incredible feeling seeing the book and being, um, realizing from that idea. And there's a few things actually I want to circle back in terms of what you just shared as well, too, is sure. number one, who are you surrounding yourself with? Yeah. And the importance of the people you surround yourself with, because um, those two friends of mine, great human beings and individuals. And as you said, they saw something in me, my abilities, not even so much that, but the, the message that needed to get out. Right. They saw it was bigger than Phoebe Trotman. It was all the people that through this book and the stories in this book will be inspired and impacted by it. So that's one thing I just want to encourage people, you know, who are you around? Because it can go so many different ways. Are you around people who bring you joy, who light your fire? Are you a type of person that brings joy and lights people's fire? Mm -hmm. um, so that was just something I'm so grateful to that for that. And then also just being open, right? Because even though, yes, I had a little resistance, I still was open to the idea. I was like, okay, well, why do you feel like I asked questions back? Why do you feel like I should write a book? Why? Like what, you know, and I had this conversation because it wasn't like immediate, no, I'm not doing it because the one thing you have to, you know, get comfortable. I say this, you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable in the sense of, there are going to be times where things are going to feel uncomfortable and that's where it's, are you able to push through that, get out of that comfort zone? And the reason you feel uncomfortable because it's usually something you've never done before, but True. there's also greatness in that, right? right? It's great. It's greatness on the other side yeah. of that and so, um, being open to that. And so the journey, of writing the book and, and it all coming together was a fun one. And just so for, for listeners, it is a collection of short stories. And so I actually reached out to some of my dear friends, my some of them are mentors, some colleagues, incredible people, and asked them if they'd be open to sharing a story in the book. Because I one of the things that was so important to me is that this is a book for any and everybody, that there's a message and a story that you will connect with. And my experience and my my lens, how I've lived my life is very different than the other entrepreneurs that are in this book. Their stories are all different. And so um, it's a unique book in that sense. And so having the people, the, the people I reached out to, I consider friends, them even saying yes, that just filled my heart with joy. The fact that they believed in the project and, and what we were creating and wanting to give and serve that they said yes. And now seeing the book and hearing the, the reviews from other people who have read it, that it's helping them and it's inspiring them to take action in their own life that's what, again, just, it, it fills my heart. I love this. So it's a compilation of people's stories, people's journeys, and how never quit on a bad day was a motto for them as well. 
Yeah. So I asked them to share one of their never quit on a bad day moments, whether it was, you know, in pursuit of a goal, whether it was a business, whether it was, um, it could be a never quit on a bad day season, you know, sometimes it is yeah. a day, sometimes not a moment, it's a day or a season. And so it was interesting because I didn't really know what the stories would be like. Are they going to all have kind of a similar thread to them and they're very different stories like what people think of their and I challenge everyone listening in like what's one of your never quit on a bad day moments that you push through and the way the book's written it's written in a sense where you know there's an introduction there's a conclusion and then there's the short stories but also at the end of every short story is a section that I wrote called reflections on resilience and it's kind of a workbook page for the reader to reflect on their own life because I truly believe we're all resilient we all have gone through some stuff and have overcome some stuff. And sometimes we just need to remember how resilient we are, right? Or what's, what's something that brings you joy. That's one of the questions in there is in terms of dream building, what's something you've always wanted to do, because sometimes we forget that too. So it's a really unique book too, where you can just open it up and read one chapter if you want, or you can read it cover to cover. It's, it's up to each individual reader. I love this. And I love the, uh, the resiliency aspect of this. How do you define resilience? I define resilience as getting back up when you get a bump or you get a push or you get a trip or you get, uh, you just feel tired and you sit down anytime you're down, you get back up. No, it's not about how you got on the down, if you will. And when I say down, I'm joking in terms of like falling down on the ground, but it, you know, it's not about what happened to put you in that place. It's about you getting back up and going forward. I, that's how I, that's my simple way of thinking of it is just getting back up and taking one step forward again and again and again. How do you think, how do you define it? How do I define it? I love how you're turning this around on me, Phoebe. This is incredible. I love it. So, you know, right now when you said, and you simplified it in these terms, getting back up, I, I feel that that's really the best way to describe resiliency. Because when I heard you right now mention it, and I was prompted my higher self wanted to ask you the question how do you define resilience as you were answering it there's a piece of me that was thinking the same thing like well what what is it to me and for me Mm -hmm. um i tend to feel that resilience and perseverance come hand in hand so Mm -hmm. i i feel that the the energy of both words are somewhat the same However, the way that you simplified it, it's like not always because it's not really perseverance to really get back up. Sometimes you could just go back, go to sleep when on a bad day and when you wake up or wake up from a nap and all of a sudden your 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 spirits are up again. And that could be resilience, too. If you're just getting back up. You know what? I just had a bad day yesterday or I had a bad hour. I took a nap. My energy's back up. And now I can I can get on up as James, James, <laughs> James Brown said, you know, <laughs> yeah, get on up. But um, resilience to me, I love this question because resilience to me is to, um, I mean, if I'm going to, if I'm going to bring it all back to love and I, I just feel that it's learning to love the parts of yourself that are not always lovable and just being mm-hmm. able to know that even those darkest times, the, the times that you're not feeling your best self, if you could turn it around and say, you know what, that's fine. I love, I even love the fact that I'm not my best self right now. And even mm-hmm. learning to turn love into uh, turning love inward at the mo- at the time where you really feel that the word resilience is non-existent can make you become mm-hmm. resilient. And so, um, and and you know what? Also, being resilient with others. As I'm saying this, it's not really also about self, uh, as, like self in general. It's also about others. How can you be resilient with other people? And then mm-hmm. I'm also feeling into the word that it's also adapting and it's also growing and it's also expanding and um, resilient really is learning and teaching and learning together with people. I feel that that's also resilient. It's part of also what we were talking about earlier, giving and receiving. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I feel like I could probably go on a little more, but that's what I'm feeling right now with what resilience means to me. But definitely overall, it's getting back up. Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely mm-hmm. getting back up. And it's okay to not get back up right away, too. Sometimes oh. it's okay to stay not up. 
whatever. Sometimes you need a moment, right? Like sometimes you just, you need a moment, you need a pause, you need a refresh, you need a refocus, right? And I love what you talked about when you get back to love, because at the end of the day, you're right. It's love for yourself, but it's love for others. And sometimes too, like I find there are those times where I am, you know, again, we're human, right? We're frustrated. We want things to go faster and this and that. And as you talked about that saying, sharing what you just shared, and I was picturing love and I was like, you know what, sometimes it's about loving others is what also fuels me to get back up because I want to yeah. show up. For so sometimes it's not even like loving. Yes, I, I self-love too. And also thinking of other people and being like, I can get up. I want to show up for that person. I want to show up for my nieces. I want my nieces to see me getting back one more time. And that's what also helps me personally, right? Is sometimes focusing on the people that we love the most that it'll inspire us and help us get back up a little bit too. Oh, yeah, definitely. Especially, I mean, you know what, even even if there are people you don't know, even if uh, so, it, it's it's important mm-hmm. and it feels important, feels great to get up for the people that we love, because then it inspires them as well. The whole we we're talking about earlier, the domino effect, the whole um, what wasn't domino effect, what, the ripple effect, ripple effect. But domino, yeah, the whole right. ripple effect. <laughs> But also loving just a stranger going to a store. Let's say you're having, you know, I've done this before where I'm not feeling my best. And let's say I go to, to the supermarket, the Mark grocery store, and I'll just turn to someone and be like, how you doing? And even though it feels forceful, I, I'm still know that there's still a, a little inner light that wants to shine through. And if that person just smiles or like, hey, I'm good, day's good. And that's enough. I mean, that could be enough to make you be resilient again to life and to open up the doors again because you've just finished, you just opened up a door for somebody. And so just peeking a smile to someone and seeing someone smile back, that's really incredible when you could just radiate the love to even a stranger. So I just, I love it all. <laughs> I love oh, it all. Yeah, absolutely. Talk about sharing your smile. Share your smile with someone. When yeah. you share that smile with someone, they smile back. Again, it shifts that energy, it lifts up, us up, lifts them up. And then that ripple effect continues on. Yeah, you know, kids are really good at this. And, and it's and it's fun to have, fun, you know, because there's a, a actually just a couple of days ago when I was on the freeway, I saw there's like these kids, I, I pulled up to a red light and there's these little kids in the back seat. And they're kind of like peeking, you know, I could be your just a whatever, just like, oh, whatever, you know, I'm just keep driving. But I kind of did what they did and peeked through and then they started kind of like putting their head back. So I put my head back Then they're kind of peeking through and smiling. I did it back a few seconds at the red light. But that was enough energy shared through our vehicles that just made me bump up my music even louder and just feel that joy even more. I loved it. I love that stuff. I love so that. Awesome. Exchange. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. So what is the biggest takeaway of your book? Ooh, the biggest takeaway that I got in creating the book or the biggest takeaway a reader will get from the book? Well, let's do both. Okay. Uh, The biggest takeaway that the reader will get from the book is that whatever there is on their heart in terms of something, well, a couple of things, I'd say one, the book definitely helps you dream again. So if someone is feeling and, you know, as we talked about, what would I say to someone who feels a little stuck? They don't really know what to, it's where to go. Yeah. The book is great in that because you're, you're reading about other people and what their goals and dreams are. And there are a section in the reflection of the resilient that ask you like, what's a dream that you've always wanted to have. And I've heard some, from some people who've read the book that it helped them. It reminded them of, of looking at their dream and starting to dream again. So that's one definitely takeaway um, from the book is the dreaming perspective huge because you'll you'll read some of the stories and and as we shared you know this whole time perspective you have a choice of how you choose to look at a situation and so you'll read about people who could have chose differently and their life would have turned out very differently Mm. Um, you'll read about people who are are everyday people with an incredible belief system and community and focus in the sense of knowing in their heart that they have dreams and desires that they can fulfill. And so it's really, and I truly believe that depending on where someone's at in the journey, different stories will connect with them differently. And I always love to hear from people like, well, which story jumped out at you? Because it is written in a way where the stories are, they're very, um, 
there, it's an individual chapter and, and you'll connect in some stories people will connect with and some they're like, oh, I didn't really connect as much with that one. And that's totally okay. It's it's designed for whatever you need to hear. So, it, you know, and, and also the importance of clarity of having some sort of clear vision for what you want to create also, because the, all, the, all the contributors had a very clear vision of what they were looking to create their life for their life. And so um, readers will walk away with that. What did I get out of writing the book? I just got, I was so energized by it. Like I've just been having this whole different, because I was in a little bit of um, just kind of a, a neutral place, I think in my life of not really sure what next, you know, I had that on my heart. I wanted to create something. I knew I wanted to help people. I knew I wanted to inspire people and help them move forward. However, I just didn't know what that looked like. And since deciding to write the book in terms of never quit on a bad day, you know, the vision for it has just grown, right? I'm already starting to work on the next book of, in the never quit on a bad day series, which I'm amazing. so fired up about. Yeah. Um, and so just feeling energized and inspired and, and hearing the stories from other people on how it's helped them is what has continued to fuel me and to move me forward. And so I just feel like I've been re-energized in some ways in terms of my, my purpose and in terms of why I'm here and, and what I can, how I can help and serve. Wow. That's incredible. And I feel re-energized by connecting with you today here on a little less fear podcast. How can our viewers, our watchers and our listeners, what, you know what, before, before we end this, I have a poem that I wrote and, uh, yeah, inspired by you and your story. So let's, uh, I don't have a title for it, but it's inspired by this, by you, by Phoebe Trotman. So here it goes. Just as the sun pushes through clouds, our inner light can burst through shadows and coldness can turn to warmth. Just as Phoebe Trotman says, never quit on a bad day. A bad day can be the reason for a better day, a better week and a better month. Our struggles in the face of diversity opens doors to discover a new type of resilience. You will be happy you did not quit on a bad day. And today is a good day. Yeah, that's it. Oh my gosh, that's phenomenal. <laughs> Thank you. Can you please send me that in written form so I can like, Yeah, I'll take a picture of it, it and then send it to you through email. Yeah, I can definitely please do that. Please do, please do. And I feel like I just have this like, like little nudge that I need to say, I feel like you're, you're like the people who are listening and watching this, they should help with the name of that poem. And wow, that should I be love that. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like where they, I, will, I so love saying, that, that yeah. out there, like let's keep it no name and then let's see what everyone else comes with us. Like shout out and tag us and let us know. And then oh, we'll my finalize God. the name together. We'll pick a name. I'm writing this down right now. Definitely tag people on this tag team back again. I love it. Phoebe Trotman, where can our viewers, our watchers and our listeners and supporters get your book? Yeah, so it is available on Amazon. So go check it out on Amazon as well. You can grab it. Well, if you go to my website, neverquitonabadday.com, uh, you can also, you can get a free chapter from the book. And that chapter is all about belief because it's so important. It's an incredible story uh, by one of my favorite people. And uh, so that's available for free on the website. And then the website just directs you to Amazon if you're ready to get the full book. And, and I love to hear from people what connects with them. What are they working on? How can I cheer them on? as well i'm obviously on instagram and facebook never quit on a bad day as well as phoebe trotman and so um never quit on a bad day is your handle even on on social media on social media yeah never quit on a bad day keep it awesome. simple you know keep it simple i'm never gonna quit on a bad day no way no how thank you so much phoebe trotman everybody here on a little less fear podcast happy holidays and happy new year to you and all of your loved ones thank you for sharing your love and your energy Thank you so much for having me. Keep shining. You are have such an incredible presence and energy, and I love what you're doing to help serve and help people grow. So keep it up. Hey, you keep it up. We're both vibing the same, and I love it. We're going to keep it up. High five. Yeah. <laughs> Take care, Phoebe. You too. Thank you.